it's really a pleasure to be on this panel and to learn so much from legal scholars on these important issues. I will be speaking on a personal note as to what it's like to be an Asian American in the United States in this hostile climate between the United States and China. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. I was born in Shanghai and I came to the United States for high school. My father was a capitalist. He owned one of the biggest theaters in Shanghai showing American Hollywood films. We had a good run, but when the revolution happened, we had to leave. People often ask me, with that background, why are you so pro-China? I respond, I am pro-China because I love my adopted country, United States, or rather the promise of what United States could be. On the surface, America has been very good to me. It gave me the opportunity, like you said, to be the first Asian American female judge in Northern California. I am the poster child for the model minority myth. Unfortunately, for every Judge Lillian Singh, there are 100 Chinese Americans who have lived in the shadows, done only menial, manual work, who have never reached their potentials and lived out their lives in suffering and eating bitter. To many, make wall beautiful America is not the land it promises to be, especially today. When the virus, coronavirus broke and President Trump blamed the coronavirus on China, people like Senator John Conning of, ten, uh, of um, Texas said things like, the coronavirus outbreak was due to a culture where people ate bats, rats, snakes, dogs, and things like that. He made a sound like China was a backward state living in the dark ages and the Chinese were an uncivilized people. He insulted over 1.4 billion people in China and other Chinese and Americans in the United States. Conspiracy theory blames China for the coronavirus deaths, joblessness, the economy, high gas prices, and everything bad, everything wrong, everything unjust in the United States. But why? The more anti-China the United States became, the more I felt compelled to speak up about the danger of US-China conflict and the importance of promoting US-China relationship. And this is why, like you said, I retired actually last week from the judiciary fully to be able to speak on this panel because as a judge, I would not be able to do so. I personally know what it was like for Chinese Americans living in America when America and China were considered enemies. Before I became a judge, I represented many Chinese Americans who were victims of the McCarthy era. During the McCarthy era, thousands of Chinese Americans were targeted as potential spies, simply because they had relatives and ties to China. Many were arrested and jailed without due process. Some were targeted for deportation without a right of representation or hearing. Many committed suicide. Meguel, the beautiful country, became a land of torture and hell. I don't want the same thing to happen in the United States again. Unfortunately, this is exactly what is happening in the United States today. It's instituted a China initiative policy under the Trump administration and continued in the Biden administration. This China initiative policy targeted Chinese Americans in the scientific and academic communities as being potential spies because of the ties and led to false accusations. Like the McCarthy era, it is based on racial profiling and guilt by association. The prosecution of scientists like Professor Franklin Tao and Ame Hu, and I won't go into that because I don't have the time for it, and I urge the listeners and viewers to check them out, has contributing to worsening of US-China tensions and contemporaneous with these prosecutions, we saw a 71% increase in incidents of violence against Asian Americans from 2019 to 2020. Let me be clear here. You cannot exercise a policy of wholesale hate mongering and threats inflation against China and Chinese and encourage and reward officials for these acts without some of the hatred trickling down into random attacks against Asian Americans. 
Proof of this is seen in California. Two months ago, Attorney General of California, Rob Bonta, released a recent hate crime report. It showed that overall hate crime events increased by 32.6%, but anti-Asian bias increased by 177.5% in 2020 to 2021. Asian hate crimes are on the rise. It is an epidemic of hatred fed and reinforced from the top. The United States is not a safe place for Chinese Americans. In this context, Nancy Pelosi's trip to Taiwan added fuel to fire and brought us more anti-Asian violence. In San Francisco, three ugly attacks occurred in the week of Pelosi's visit. I know all of these three victims. Unfortunately, one of them died. I also know Nancy Pelosi very well personally for over 30 years. I'm truly disappointed with her and many Chinese Americans feel betrayed and will no longer support her. Pelosi's Taiwan trip is not just about Taiwan. It has geopolitical effects. Pelosi is wrong. My friends in Taiwan tell me that most people in Taiwan want the status quo. Life is good in Taiwan right now. Its people, culture, economy are deeply intertwined with China. In 2021, two-way trade between China and Taiwan was valued at 328.34 billion US dollars. Chinese customs data show that Taiwan exported 188.91 billion US dollars worth of goods and services to China and Hong Kong in 2021, whereas US Taiwan trade was only 65.7 billion US dollars. China and not the United States is Taiwan's biggest trade partner, five times bigger. We Chinese people are very practical. It is all about doing business for mutual benefit. It is about putting food in your mouth, not politics. Nancy's trip to Taiwan was also bad for American people. It cost American jobs. Contemporary Emperax technology, CATL, China's world leading manufacturer of automobile batteries was planning to build battery plants in South Carolina and Kentucky. That plant was going to supply batteries for Ford and BMW and provide lots of jobs for good old Americans. But after Pelosi's trip, CATL declared the plan to build the plants has been deferred. We lost jobs because of her trip to Taiwan. There are families that may be hungry or homeless because they lost this opportunity. Multiply that a million times, and you start to get a sense of how terrible this escalation with China has been not just to Chinese Americans, but all Americans. But worst of all, Pelosi's trip has brought us closer to a real war between the United States and China, as explained by our moderator, Ms. Desa. On September 4th, 2022, just 10 days ago, the United States Senate Foreign Relations Committee approved the Taiwan Policy Act of 2022. This act, if passed, will make the United States the only major country in the world that recognizes Taiwan as a nation independent of the People's Republic of China. China will never accept that. For the past half century, the United States policy towards China has been a one China policy, whereby the United States recognizes the People's Republic of China as the only legitimate government of China and that Taiwan is part of China. If this Taiwan Policy Act were enacted, it will mark a radical shift away from the US one China policy. It will also upset the post-World War II order to set up, that was set up by the Cairo and Potsdam declarations that returned Taiwan to China, irrespective of the form of China's government. To China, Separation from Taiwan is a result of an unfinished civil war that China intends to finish by reuniting with the island peacefully. But if pushed at any cost, by enacting the 
this Taiwan Act, the United States will surely be on a collision course with China. Do we really want a war with China over an island across the ocean that most Americans cannot even find on a map? No, we don't. We cannot and don't want a war with China. Some of us are circulating a petition urging our representatives in Washington not to support this act. Unfortunately, we have hawks like Anthony Blinken, US Secretary of State, even declaring that nuclear weapons are not off the table as our moderator decide just mentioned. Are we going crazy? A nuclear war between China and the United States could result in the end of the world. We cannot afford that. The entire world is seriously in danger. We need to do everything to prevent a war. I urge everyone to do everything to promote a better relationship between my two beloved countries, China and the United States, so we will have a better, safer world for all mankind. Thank you.